Hi, this is Rich. We're at the GOQ and Q Coherent booth at Denver ILMF 2012, and we're here with Derek Wagg, Manager of Support Services, and he's going to show us a bit about the GOQ software and then the uh, um, LiDAR 360. All right, so our, our GOQ uh, workflow management software is the, is the, uh, you know, the premier software for being able to go through and set up your workflow and do it in a kind of a robust and rigid way, give you an ability to go back and review the historic information on your data set, and give your project managers a good way to look at the project information as it's happening in real time and what the status of that project is. So this is the, uh, the software here. It basically sets everything up, so instead of looking at data, uh, you know, file listings of data and things like that, you get to actually look at it spatially. So you can see what the extents of your data files are. You can get an idea of kind of where these things exist in the world and how it relates to your other reference information before you really start diving into the data sets. So those flight lines? That's these like these are particular of flight lines, and it's showing you the outlines here. We're giving you oh, so a, a general idea of where the, the footprint of that particular data file is so that we can tell things like, you know, if we uh, set up a, a set of working segments over top of those, we can get a feel for, you know, are we in the same location? Uh, we can take and, and break that down and segment the data up. Um, by, by doing that, it allows us to kind of, uh, by putting all your reference information together, allow to see that, you know, how things relate. A lot of different uh, projections are used in, in the course of processing your data, and we give you a lot of capabilities of using the different coordinate systems and transformations for moving between the systems. Um, once we get into segmenting those sources up, what we're doing is taking those sources into block uh, configurations. We give you a number of tools for actually setting that up. And if you notice the colors here, each of the colors are that you're seeing is representation of the particular workflow that's been designed for that piece of data. So this, this little block here that I've selected is representational of an LES data file, so the actual LiDAR data file that is associated with that particular entity. It has a workflow to it, and this workflow is going to going to take and tell you what needs to happen. So the user can actually look at it and say, "Hey, I need to run, you know, initial QC. I need to run some macros on the data set here, and then I need to take it and process it and do some cleanup with the data set." So by going through this process, it's going to cue the user as to what needs to happen next in the workflow. And there's some uh, different controls in there to be able to control what, uh, you know, what capabilities it has, what step it is to, to go to next. And we can do things such as uh, linking to any type of different softwares uh, that you want to run in your process. So you're not limited to just the Terascan or the LP360. It's anything else that you want to do. And pretty much any type of software that is command line driven, you can run through the GOQ system. So I can do even something as simple as you know, launching Excel or launching Notepad. Um, so it gives you a way of kind of working through the system. And in doing that, what's going to happen is as I work, um, I, I don't have to worry about where the data is located because the data management system is going to operate with that. I don't need to worry about what program do I need to run to, to operate a particular step. What I'm going to be able to do is just tell it I want to do this particular step. When I execute that step, it's going to actually take and it's going to find where that data is located. It's going to serve that data information up. It's going to launch out the particular program that we're wanting to work with in. And it's going to pass that information along to that other program. In doing so, it's, it is a multi-user environment, so it does uh, do a bunch of locking mechanisms to ensure that people aren't working within the same data files at the same time. And then it allows you to go in and do whatever it is that you're wanting to do in that particular pro program as part of your normal workflow. In doing so, it's to, uh, when we exit out of here, because I don't necessarily know what you're doing in that particular program, because this one doesn't provide feedback, it brings up a little dialog box actually asking for user user feedback, saying, you know, what have I done at this particular step? Am I complete? Am I not complete? If I'm not complete, do I have an ETC to what would complete that particular data file? So it gives you some tracking here. I can make some sort of a, you know some sort of a, a note here. You know, and then I can say, oh, I completed this particular data file. And what happens is all that information then gets stored as part of the metadata here. So when I go back and I look at that particular history information, I can see when I ran it, I can see my notes that I left, so I'm no longer leaving chicken scratch notes on papers all over the office. Anybody can sit down now and start to follow through this workflow, so it gives you a nice way to be able to pick up from where you were and kind of go through that process. Overall, it gives you this, this nice reference capabilities in here to see you know, 
all your different data types, how how those data types are associated, where they're located in terms of one another, and then how that is in relationship to your workflow. All this information is captured into a SQL database, and then that SQL database information can be rolled up and actually simplified for project managers or clients where we're actually just going to give you dials and gauges that are going to tell you what percentage of completion you need to reach on your project. It gives you a lot of control as to how you feed that information to your managers. So then that's that's the, the general gist on our, on our workflow management software. And then our other software is... Step over here to the... Step over here. Actually got the... It's LP360 for ArcGIS. So this is, uh, this is our way of, of being able to work with uh, LiDAR data within the ArcGIS environment. So what you're seeing here is colored by elevation, it's just some LiDAR data in a particular area. Um, this is, happens to be in uh, near the Keeneland racetrack, it was a data set provided to us by PhotoScience. And it allows you to do uh, viewing directly within uh, ArcGIS, or the ArcMap environment. We can do something as simple as you know some map view. And just look at this by elevation. I can throw contours on there. I can take and, and look at uh, profile information. Um, you know where I say I want to I want to cut a profile over the particular building, and now I can see what those buildings look like. So it gives you all kinds of different tools. That way, you have all kinds of different classification tools. So I can go in and change classes of all these buildings. I can do that all interactively. So it gives me a chance within the Arc environment to actually do all this editing. The new tool we've added in is the capability to um, to actually take and, and generate up some ground uh, classification. So what we can do here is we can preview, and I can run a, a model here. What it's going to do is go through a number of iterations to try to make determinations out of this point cloud, which is, starts out as unclassified, what you're seeing here in the gray. And it's going to go through and calculate out which one of those points actually belong on the ground. And I'm doing this all in the ARC environment. So as an ARC user, I don't actually have to receive classified data. I can now take and I can make that up as we go along. So this now showing you here in the preview mode what that's going to look like. So it allows me to test my parameters. And you know when I decide that the parameters are what I'd like, I can take and, and generate that against the, the data set. Um, you know, in this particular instance here, I'm, I'm looking at a, a small sample of the data set. You know, it's just a, a small little area. But in essence, we call it limitless LiDAR because we can put uh, as, as large of an area of LiDAR as you want in here. We go through a scheme where we actually visualize only portions of the data at a time. So if you look here, I'm only looking at the moment at 33% of the data points. And that allows you, us to actually uh, let you put in large quantities of data into the environment and be able to see how that works. There are a number of tools within the software package to be able to do uh, different types of exports. So we can actually take and oh, I hit the right button. <laughs> it allows you to actually export things such as points. Uh, you have different types of formats. You can do shape files, you can do design files, you can do LAS files with all the different LAS formats that are available. We can take and export surface types. So there's a whole number of different surface types that we can do where we're going to generate either off the tin or the IDW surface. And we can generate you know, either elevation, colorations, we can do slope, aspect, hill shade. We can generate those contours that are similar to the ones I've previewed. Or we can do intensity imagery. A number of different export formats that are available, one of them being the ARC binary raster format, so that you can actually uh, uh, sorry, generate right up into the Esri binary grid so that you don't have to go through some intermediate steps, and then that you can use in your other processing within um, ARC. The other thing that you can do with this is our is the capability to actually do brake line collection. We give you a number of different tools for, for going in and, and using basically an editing session, editing models, uh, where we give you a number of different conflation tasks that you can use for, for basically how do I put a brake line in, how does it fit to my LiDAR data, and then how do I use that in my surface so I can actually visualize that process. Uh, the other way that we can look at the data is, is, our, is our 3D view. So our 3D view is going to allow us to look at it. Uh, you can now swing this data around and have a look at it. Uh, each of the views are independent in terms of how you want to color them, so I don't have to have the same coloration everywhere. I can, I can change what I'm doing in one view compared to another because sometimes you know, a profile is going to give you certain information compared to the 3D window and it'll give you another piece of information. So it all depends on what, you're, what particular that it is that you're looking to try to do in an area. 
we have set it up in a way that you know we can even see our contours in this view, and we can actually take and, and add in vector elements, and we can see those vector elements either in the in the 3D view or in the profile view as well. So you're not restricted to just your map view when you're when you're working with the lidar data. You actually use all all three. Well, that's great. Um, I guess for more information, you can check them out at uh, what GOQ.com or QCCoherent.com, and uh, we appreciate your time, Derek. Thanks.